Thoughts on the new Japanese era name, Neiwa, Comely Peace, by me. Uh, the link to the article is in the description below. The new Japanese era name has been announced, Neiwa. The term is said to be taken from the Manyoshu collection of 10,000 leaves, 759, Japan's oldest imperial collection of poetry. Significantly, the two Chinese characters, De, comely, resplendent, and Wa, peace, harmony, gentle, Japan, do not appear conjoined in the relevant Man Yoshu passage, which is a prose introduction to a sequence of 32 waka poems written in Kanbun, a form of classical Chinese, but rather are separated by four characters. Here is the relevant passage, and then the kanji is listed there, the passage, Kanbun passage is in the article, look at that. We might translate this passage into English as It was in new spring, in a fair, venerable day, month, when the air was clear and the wind a gentle wa breeze, plum flowers blossomed a beauty's charming white as powder before a mirror, and the fragrance of the or orchids was like sweet incense. Although the term ap appears briefly in Morohashi's 13 volume The Great Chinese Japanese Dictionary, it is so rare and obscure that we can regard Reiwa as a neologism. Neologism. This word was coined by Nakanishi Susuma, renowned scholar of Japanese classical literature and world's leading authority on the Man Yoshu. When the NHK announcer disclosed the term's literary source, my first thought was that Professor Nakanishi must be behind it, and the Japanese government eventually acknowledged that he was indeed behind the new era name, confirming my initial suspicions. It is impossible to speculate on the meaning of the new era name without reading at least some of Professor Nakanishi's pioneering works. Dewa includes the character De, which means, among other things, ordinance, order, or command, injunction. Like most Japanese people, my initial reaction was confusion. After all, the De is the same De found in Mei De, meaning command. Does the term mean then, as some have suggested, Japan commands, or obey Yamato, or order and harmony, as the BBC mistranslated it? Was this a sinister warning to do as we are to told or else? But the more I thought about it, the more I realized that such interpretations miss the mark. It's worth noting that Nakanishi is a pacifist signatory to an anti-war group that seeks to protect Article 9 of Japan's pacifist constitution from would-be revisionists, a fact that should put to rest the fear that the term Reiwa is a dog whistle for nationalists and xenophobes. A few things should be said to rectify misunderstandings about the new era name, explain its literary and linguistic context, and try to clear up the controversy. Beauty, not order. Unlike the four previous eras, Meiji, Taisho, Showa, Heisei, no one seems to know for certain exactly what Deiwa means, or is meant to mean. The name is written with two characters, Dei and Wa. Wa famously means peace, harmony, or Japan, and conf carries Confucian overtones. The character Dei is more ambiguous, and has caused alarm in some quarters, as noted above. It has at least three meaning clusters. In antiquity, it meant an otsuge, a revelation or command from a Shinto deity, and thus something divine or auspicious. Second, it is the traditional prefix attached to something venerable or fine, as in the fairly common words deijo and deisoka, meaning someone's excellent son or daughter. And thirdly, the character is used in a legalistic sense to denote something mandatory or coerced, such as the terms meide, command or injunction, and jore, an ordinance. Today, this last meaning is the best known, hence the alarm bells. In classical literature, the Chinese character de usually means resplendent, excellent, beautiful, or comely. This is true in the above cited passage from the Manyosho. One of its readings is uruwashi a word often written as with the character for de, as in kirei no de, which uses the same Chinese character as the de in kirei, meaning beautiful or pretty. In short, in classical literature, de is more or less synonymous with utsukushi, beautiful. 
As Professor Nakanishi likes to point out, the root of uruwashi is uru. Long before Chinese characters came to Japan, this two-syllable word carried connotations of moistness, sensuality, sexiness, and youth. As Nakanishi explains in the Japanese linguistic landscape reflections on quintessential words, translated by me and scheduled for publication this spring, it's uh, already published, I have the link to that below, uh, Nakanishi writes, If you gather up all the closely related terms, you find among them various moisture-related expressions that begin with uru, the root form of uda, such as wet with moisture, uruoi ga ada, and wet eyes wet with tears, mega uruma. It is also common in conversational speech to hear someone say that they are so sad that even their heart is wet with tears. Kokoro mo uru uru. In Kojiki, the record of ancient matters, 711 to 712 AD, the oldest extant chronicle in Japan the, is another possible source for reiwa. Okay, so the kojiki is another possible source for reiwa, the word, although nobody's pointed this out yet. One of the most famous passages from that chronicle is the phrase Yamato shi uruwashi. In the following passage, uh, Tatanazuku aogaki yama gomoreru Yamato shi uruwashi Okay, translated by Donald Philippi in traditional Japanese literature and anthology as The mountains are green partitions lying layer upon layer, nestled among the mountains. How beautiful is Yamato. So whether we read the character day in the context of the Mayoshu or the Kojiki, its Uruwashi meaning is the same. Lovely, beautiful, comely, resplendent. Hardly a dog whistle for nationalists. So what is reiwa in English? So what is the best translation for reiwa then? In a sense, this is a largely moot question. Nobody ever calls the Meiji period bright rule on account of its characters bright and rule, Meiji. Nobody calls the Taisho period greatly correct because it was written with the kanjis dai, great, big, and sho, rectified, correct, Taisho. Or the Tenmei era, heavenly brightness. Or Tempio, flat like heaven. Indeed, the significance of era names only seem to matter once the era has ended and people start assessing the extent to which that era lived up to its original name. Soon after the new era name announcement, the Japanese government issued its own utterly predictable official trans English translation, Beautiful Harmony. I say predictable because the Japanese, ever since novelist Kawabata Yasunari gave his famous Nobel Prize lecture, Japan, The Beautiful, and Myself, Utsukushi Nihon no Watakushi, in 1968, the Japanese have tended to overuse this word, Utsukushi, especially when describing their native traditions, language, or culture. In 2006, Prime Minister Abe wrote a bestseller called Toward a Beautiful Japan, Utsukushi Nippon E. They use this ungainly slogan to stoke national pride in the increasingly overworked and impoverished population. In general, whenever bloviating po politicians start congratulating themselves on the beauty of their national culture, it is time to run the other way. To be fair though, translating the adjective utsukushi presents a particular problem for the literary translator, especially when it appears in titles. My general rule of thumb is to ignore it altogether, or use comely. If I had to translate Dewa, I would probably go with comely peace. I suppose any combination of venerable, exquisite, resplendent, comely, fine, excellent, exquisite, or lovely, and harmony, peace, or gentleness would suffice. It might be helpful to divide the term's meaning into two categories, which I call conscious content and unconscious content. Conscious content is what Prime Minister Abe and the masses think it means. Unconscious content is all the etymological, intertextual, and historical trappings. Language always has both types of content, which are equally important. Where does meaning lie? In the roots and evolution of a word, or in how common folk miss or understand or misunderstand and misuse it? Our stance on Dewa depends on whether we privilege reader response or literary context. In any case, to those worried about fascist overtones, I say this. It all depends on what happens in the next 50 years. If Japan and the world end up taking the fascist path, 
fascist overtones will have been there from the start. If not, the term is innocent. 